Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Transfer Express webinar, Printing Licensed Logos. My name is Andy Curtis. I am the Senior Manager of Customer Service and Graphic Design here at Transfer Express. I've been with the company for 18 years. And if you've joined us on these webinars before, then I would like to welcome you back and thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time with me, then hey, thanks for coming. Uh, the way this is going to work is we are going to go for somewhere between half an hour and 45 minutes here. Uh, there is a chat box off to the side. If you have any questions, I encourage you to pop them into the chat box and I will do my best to answer them through the course of the webinar. If I miss the question, then my helper behind the curtain is going to be watching also and he will be, uh, he will be answering the questions if I miss them. We are recording this webinar and it will be posted on our website later, uh, just like always. So if you do miss something or you got to cut out or um, for the people who will inevitably join us halfway through, uh, the recording will be available. So uh, we will be, uh, you'll be able to replay this later at your leisure. So with all of that stuff out of the way, I want to thank you all for joining me again. We're going to discuss printing licensed logos. So uh, this is a topic we get asked a lot about at Transfer Express. This is something that uh, comes up, uh, maybe not daily, but uh, pretty often for the most part. So uh, this is one of those that if you are an old veteran of Transfer Express, if you have uh, crossed this bridge with us before, then it's just a good reminder of, of how these things work. Um, if you are new to Transfer Express and you have not done business with us before, then this should be good info for you. So be ready to take some notes. <laughs> um, and as my helper pointed out, the recording and the slides will go out tomorrow via email. So uh, the PDF of the slides is always super useful too, since uh, the slides have all the information on them, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is today's agenda. We're going to go over what is licensed apparel. We're going to talk about uh, where you would get a license, the cost of a license, and then we're going to talk about alternatives to licensing. The uh, uh, bigger point on this slide, though, as my doggo here is proclaiming, I am not a lawyer. <laughs> so let's just get that straight right off the bat with everybody. Uh, neither I nor my helper behind the curtain here, neither of us are lawyers. So uh, at the end of the day, I cannot answer your legal questions about copyrights. I cannot answer uh, legal questions about what the law is and what the law says. Uh, what I can do, however, is I can present to you this topic from a Transfer Express perspective uh, as a manufacturer, as a vendor who is making this product for you guys, the decorators, we can explain what this topic looks like from our perspective. So again, if you're new to us, this should be good info for you. If you are an old veteran of Transfer Express and we've talked about this topic before, then this probably isn't going to be anything that you haven't heard from us already. So. Um, but again, uh, just to put it out there, we are not lawyers, so we cannot give you legal advice. But what we can do is explain what this topic looks like from our perspective. So with that being said, the first thing we're going to discuss, what is licensed apparel? So when you say licensed apparel, what, what exactly is this? So uh, the term trademark refers to recognizable insignia, phrase, word, or symbol that denotes a specific product and legally differentiates it from all other products of its kind. So there's our dictionary definition for you. Uh, trademark logos are those logos like you see on my slide here. These are trademarked. These are logos that belong to a company. So the trademark essentially means that this belongs to somebody specific and you cannot reprint that without their permission of some form or another. Licensing is one form of permission you can obtain to reproduce a logo and that's what we're going to discuss today. So uh, copyrights are one of those things that are just, it's across the board. You see copyrights left, right, and center. Everything is copywritten from the fast food restaurant you got your lunch at today to the grocery store that you shop at, their logo is copywritten, to the laundry detergent that you put into your washing machine, that logo is copywritten. It's all copywritten. These are all logos that belong to somebody. And remember, 
part of what that copyright means is the company that owns that copyright, the company that owns that logo gets a legal say in how their logo is printed and who gets to print their logo and how their logo is represented. They get those rights. That's part of what a copyright is. Copyrights are obtained to protect your logo, to protect your name, to protect your brand, uh, to protect the messaging that goes around it. So that means if you produce something without having the permission to do so, if you don't have the licensing or the permission agreement with that particular copyright holder, then you are doing so illegally and they can pursue legal action at that point. So uh, copyrights are something that should be taken very seriously. Um, and copyrights are one of those things that uh, we do our best to keep an eye on here at Transfer Express. So for trademark logos, uh, you do need a licensing agreement to print it. So what are some examples? So uh, these are the licensed logos. These are the copywritten logos that we see, or copyrighted, I suppose is the right word, uh, that we see most often here at Transfer Express. So professional sports teams logos, college logos, Disney, clothing brands like Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour, Looney Tunes, Boy Scouts, movie stuff, sororities and fraternities. These are all things that are copyrighted. And these are all things that you do need to get permission for. Now, it's worth noting that while I, as the customer service manager here at Transfer Express, I can identify to you that we need you to have the proper permission, the proper licensing to print these logos, we can't necessarily tell you where to get the permission to print those logos. And that's one of those things that's not really our job here at Transfer Express. I can't tell you where to get the permission from, but I can tell you if we do need permission for it. Um, and a lot of this has to do with intent. Uh, if, if there's an intent to resell that logo or to profit off that logo, then obviously we have to question whether or not the proper permission has been obtained. Uh, you'll notice that all of the items that are listed on my slide here, professional teams, college teams, Disney clothing brands, these are all things that could easily be reproduced and sold for a profit and have having nothing to do with going through the proper channels. For example, uh, a professional sports team logo you could print and sell on the streets of downtown Cleveland uh, here in Cleveland and make money off it. So the point is you need to make sure you have proper permission because if you are doing that, if you are reproducing that logo and you are selling it on the streets, that is illegal unless you have obtained the proper licensing and the proper permissions to do so. Now, with that being said, it's also illegal to do that with, let's say, using the example of our laundry detergent I mentioned earlier. That laundry detergent logo is copyrighted also, uh, but obviously there's not quite so much a uh, black market value of uh, laundry detergent logos. <laughs> so that's not something that's going to be questioned quite so thoroughly as something like a professional team or a college logo or Disney logo, for example. So these are things that we do make sure, and if we do see something that comes through, uh, we will make sure that permission has been obtained for it. Um, now, I also want to mention uh, one of the questions that we tend to get from people is they may send us one of the logos that you see on the screen. Uh, some of these logos we actually see more often than others just because they're popular or they're uh, easily identifiable. So there's some of these logos that we see all the time. And uh, what people will tell us is, well, you know, I heard through the grapevine that if I change this logo a certain percentage that I'm allowed to print it. And unfortunately, I can tell you that's not true. <laughs> there is no magic percentage that you're uh, able to change something and it magically becomes okay to print. The problem, of course, always being that if it can be recognized as being uh, identical to somebody, that you got to have permission for that. Uh, so Stephen asks a good question here. Uh, Stephen is asking, do you have customers that have successfully received permission to reproduce the Boy Scouts logo or Knights of Columbus logo? Um, what we're going to talk about here in a minute, Stephen, is what these different licensing agreements look like and what different permission agreements look like. Uh, and some of these organizations, it is very easy to obtain permission. Uh, for example, uh, YMCA is an organization that uh, YMCA's all over the country need shirts printed, right? And YMCA's order a lot of custom apparel. 
So getting permission from a YMCA to reproduce their logo tends to be very easy because they, they don't have uh, rigorous screening necessarily. It's usually easy to get a letter from the local YMCA indicating that you do have permission to reproduce that logo. Um, I can't speak, Stephen, to the Boy Scouts and the Knights of Columbus because each organization is different. Uh, so each organization being a, a tiny bit different, some of them have different requirements. For example, the Boy Scouts, um, we happen to know here at Transfer Express just through our own dealings that the Boy Scouts of America, you cannot get permission from a local scout leader. Uh, the permission to print the Boy Scouts logo needs to come from the national office. And that's not something that we've made up here at Transfer Express. This is the rules that the Boy Scouts have set on their logo. And again, since they have copyright, uh, they, get the, they get to set the rules there. Um, Georgina is asking a good question here too. Uh, can you print wrappers, names, lyrics, images? So this is a great question, Georgina. Um, this is one of those things that uh, is tough to monitor because every person owns their image. So uh, rappers and actors and actresses, they, uh, celebrities in general, they own their image. So uh, you could have a kid who draws a perfect picture of Beyonce and say, well, my child drew this picture, it belongs to them. Sure, the, the actual physical picture belongs to them, but the image of Beyonce belongs to Beyonce. And to produce that, you would need permission from Beyonce to do so. So uh, just an, an example of that sort of thing. So where do you get a licensing agreement from? Now, at the end of the day, like I mentioned before, we can tell you if something requires permission at Transfer Express, but that doesn't necessarily mean we can tell you where to get the permission from. That's something that's up to you and something that you need to dig into and figure out based on what you're trying to print. So uh, what exactly is a licensing agreement though? So let's, let's start there. A licensing agreement is a contractual agreement between you and the holder of the trademark. So it's an agreement to print. It's an agreement that usually defines what you're allowed to print and how you're allowed to print it. Uh, for example, Boy Scouts of America, they have uh, in their licensing agreement, they stipulate how you're allowed to reproduce their logo. There's certain things you're allowed to do with it and certain things you can't do with it. Um, typically, uh, with licensing agreements, there are fees that you have to pay, uh, regular fees, annual fees, uh, sales per uh, uh, royalty per sale, for example. Um, and this is where every licensing agreement is different with every organization across the board. So I, I can't sit here and tell you necessarily how Disney works versus the NFL versus uh, a Greek organization. But there are fees that tend to be involved. And most of these organizations require you to submit a concrete business plan. So, uh, there's a whole bunch of good questions popping up here. Um, for example, Ron has asked, can I print the Seattle skyline? So uh, something like that, like the city skyline, a city skyline, that's not something that's copyrighted necessarily because nobody necessarily owns the skyline. So that's something you certainly can't do. You just have to provide artwork for it. Um, uh, how about uh, portions of lyrics, portions of lyrics that are slightly modified? So Julio, that's one of those things where if it can be identified as having belonging to somebody, if, if it's, the rule is always that if it can be identified that it belongs to somebody, then it's probably too close and it needs to have permission, right? Uh, Lori Brown, that's a fantastic question. What about automobile logos like Chevy? Uh, now those are logos that do belong to those organizations and those are logos that uh, again it comes down to the intent is the intent to make money off of that logo and who is the logo for for that sort of thing you would want to make sure that you do have proper permission but that sort of thing tends to be easy because you can get permission from the local dealerships for that sort of thing but anyway, um, so licensing agreements are agreements between you and the organization uh, of how you're allowed to print, what you're allowed to print, what you have to do, what they require you to do, and then what the costs are for that. Now, again, like I said before, we can't tell you exactly where to get these permissions from at Transfer Express. I can simply tell you that you need permission. So what I can tell you is that these are some of the sources, and these are just general sources. You can find this stuff on Google. Um, these are certain sources that you can go to to obtain licensing agreements. 
Uh, for example, for certain sororities and fraternities, uh, you can go to greeklicensing.com uh, or uh, NBA. They have a section on their website, uh, global.nba.com slash NBA license application. Uh, so there's plenty of places that you can find when you Google. At the end of the day, like I said, I can't tell you where to get these licensing agreements, especially if it's something that might be a little bit more obscure. Cartoon characters are a great example. Um, Disney, of course, we all know Disney, but if it's a cartoon character that falls outside that Disney family, it doesn't mean that we can print it. There are more cartoon characters than Disney after all. It just, it can be hard to figure out who owns it and who to obtain permission from. And again, we can't tell you that. We can just identify to you, hey, we have to have permission to print this. So let's talk about what the steps can be. Uh, what we're looking at here is just an example of what you would go through to obtain an NFL licensing agreement. Um, and this is just an example for the NFL. But the point that we're trying to make and showing you here is that licensing agreements can have a lot of different hoops that you have to jump through. Remember, what you're essentially doing is you're becoming a partner of that organization. They're giving you permission, carte blanche, or not quite carte blanche, but they're giving you permission to print their logos. So in order to obtain that permission, they're looking to make sure that you're the right person, that you're the right business, that they're not signing up to be involved with somebody who could be doing something that they don't approve of. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that can uh, go through with these licensing agreements. But just for the sake of showing you an example of what this looks like from the NFL's perspective, um, you see number one here is gain three years of manufacturing experience. The NFL only grants vendor licenses to manufacturers, not middlemen or distributors. So they're actually setting up an expectation of how long you have to be a manufacturer for. Uh, you'll see that uh, they're telling you to secure a minimum of $100,000 to meet the royalty guarantee required by the NFL. Um, if you continue to read on here, you'll see that they expect uh, business documentation. Um, they're expecting financial history in conjunction with the application, a business plan, and a proposal that details how you intend to use the licensed NFL merchandise in your business. So you see that the, the point we're making here is that there are lots of steps that can go into these licensing agreements, and they are not something for the faint of heart. They're not something that uh, it's meant to weed out companies. It's not something that just any company under the sun can sign up for. There are multiple steps. And this is just the NFL. If you go to different companies, uh, different organizations, you'll find that each one is a little bit different. For example, if you're in the college realm and you're doing this with the Greek licensing, you'll find that the Greek community, their permission looks a little bit different than this. This is just how the NFL tends to function. Uh, so Stephanie's asking, uh, I do state names because the name can also be a street name within a state. Yeah, uh, you can print the name of a state, the state of Ohio or the state of Michigan. You can print state names. That sort of thing is uh, uh, belongs to the public, so you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Uh, but again, this is just an example of what the NFL licensing process looks like. So uh, you're going to experience something different with each organization. And the point we're trying to make to you here is that there are a lot of hoops that you have to jump through to get these licensing agreements. And then remember, part of this agreement dictates what happens if you break their agreement and what happens, what they're allowed to do if you violate the terms of that contract. Because remember, that's what this is, is you're signing a contract. So if you violate the terms of that contract, there are some crazy things that can happen. Um, so this is going the route of obtaining a license from a company is something that should be taken very, very seriously. Tammy, actually, that's a fantastic question, Tammy. Uh, what about slogans like, where's the beef? <laughs> we're, we're showing our age on that one, Tammy, if the fact that both of us can laugh at that. Um, slogans like that can be very tough because at the end of the day, some of those slogans can be copyrighted. And what we rely on you as the customer, we rely on you to go determine if that phrase is copyrighted and where the permission needs to come from. Um, so that's one of those things you need to be careful about and you need to do some digging before you immediately uh, jump into an order like that. So this is a question that we get a lot and something that we definitely wanted to address. Uh, and, and 
it comes up a lot with Disney. Uh, you can go on Etsy.com right now and you can find people on Etsy that will sell you artwork of Disney. You can, you can find people that will sell you the Mickey Mouse ears uh, artwork of Disney. Here's the hitch though, is these people on Etsy who sell this artwork, they don't necessarily have permission. As a matter of fact, they probably don't have permission. Uh, so if you do go to Etsy and you do buy artwork, that doesn't mean you have permission to print that artwork from whoever owns the copyright. It means that you purchased a copy of that artwork, which is most likely bootleg artwork. So at the end of the day, this is one of those things where we always feel bad at Transfer Express. Our, our goal is to place your order. Remember that we're here to help you grow your business. We want to assist you. We want to place your order. We want to get you the transfers that you need for that Disney vacation, for that event, for that thing that's happening. But remember, our goal here at Transfer Express is also to protect you and to protect ourselves from violating, violating any copyright laws that could be incredibly detrimental and harmful to both you and us. As somebody who's been with our company for 18 years, I can tell you that when we see one of our customers go through copyright violations and get dinged for these things, it's very painful to watch because it's 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 hard to see that happen because the, the penalties can be very steep and can be very personally painful. So at Transfer Express, our goal here is to protect you as well. And unfortunately, what happens on Etsy is these people don't have permission. I can go purchase on Etsy right now a copy of Mickey Mouse ears, but they don't actually have permission themselves to be doing that. So I understand that you've purchased those Mickey Mouse ears from, from Etsy, but I can't actually print those for you regardless, even though you bought them off of somebody on Etsy. And this is not something that's exclusive to Etsy. This is just an example that we hear a lot. You'll see the same thing happen with uh, eBay. You'll see this happen periodically too, where my graphic designer charged me and he did it himself. He came up from scratch, et cetera, et cetera. And that's great. But at the end of the day, uh, even if your graphic designer made those Mickey Mouse ears themselves, they're still the Mickey Mouse ears. And if it looks like the Mickey Mouse ears, we can't print it without permission. So let's talk about avoiding licensing because at the end of the day, one of the things that you see is that, uh, hopefully the point you're getting is there are a lot of hoops that need to be jumped through when it comes to licensing, when it comes to getting permission. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. There's a lot of money that goes into that, having to have business plans and submitting all that kind of stuff. It can be tough. So at the end of the day, how do you get around it? How do you take that order? How do you do business with that person? Um, how do you manage that without getting into trouble? And how do you still make money? Because at the end of the day, that's that's the goal, right? You, we're trying to put food on our table. We're trying to make money in our businesses, but we want to make sure we're doing it the legal, correct way. So the way to avoid licensing is to get creative. I know that's my second point, but I'm making it my my number one point here. <laughs> Get creative, be creative, okay? Use team colors. So for example, I, I love these examples on our slide because these are perfect. If you know anything about Cleveland sports, you know that anything having to do with Cleveland football and Cleveland basketball, Cleveland baseball, we are rabid, crazy sports fans in Cleveland, okay? You, you can't insult the sports teams, uh, even walking the halls here at Transfer Express. If, if, you're, a, if you're a Pittsburgh fan, then you, you've got to duck and cover. Um, so uh, point being, what we've done here is we've done some designs that are riffs on Cleveland sports, but don't exactly mimic the Cleveland sports logos that are very, very copyrighted. So, uh, for example, our uh, basketball design there at the bottom, uh, the gold and the maroon there, is perfect because we haven't mentioned any professional sports team's names. We haven't used any of the sports team's logos. We've simply used their colors, maroon and gold. We've said Cleveland uh, that I love. 216 CLE. This is another great strategy when you're trying to get around licensing is using things that are pertinent 
pertinent to your area. For example, in Cleveland, we identify using our airport abbreviation, CLE. It's something that's become very hip and popular in Cleveland the last couple of years. So for example, for us, that's something you would do. That's why you see the CLE stuff here all over the place. Um, now that may not pertain necessarily to your city, but odds are pretty good that your city does have some kind of unique little nickname or identifier uh, that you could run with instead. The other thing that you do see a lot are area codes. Area codes definitely pertain to a certain place uh, and can be very popular as well. So it's the same thing here in Northeast Ohio. The 216 area code belongs to Cleveland. So uh, that's something that you do see printed all the time. And again, that's not copyrighted. You can't get in trouble for printing CLE or for printing 216. These are things that are not copyrighted. They're public domain. Um, and the other great tip here uh, is using our Easy View Online Designer. I'm going to show you some screenshots here in a minute, but our Easy View Online Designer is a, a free art resource of non copyrighted artwork that we have created at Transfer Express that you can utilize and not be afraid of any kind of copyright infringement utilizing that particular artwork. So, uh, definitely a good tip there. Uh, Joe, that is a fantastic question. Isn't there grounds for uh, inference, confusing the marketplace? And you know what, Joe, I, the best answer to that question would be uh, to consult your attorney. Because <laughs> uh, again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't tell you the legalese behind it. Um, but uh, what I can do is I can tell you that this is uh, these are acceptable versions that are not subject to copyright. That's a great story, Alan. Thank you for sharing that. Um, if you talk to some of the folks who've been in the screen printing and embroidery business for some years, a lot of times you will see stories like the one Alan has posted in our chat here. Uh, you'll see stories of, of people that uh, were producing things and weren't doing things properly and FBI raids, police raids. Um, I uh, have a regular customer that I've talked to for most of my 18 years here at Transfer Express, and she, at one point, uh, she owned a screen printing shop and admitted to having uh, done some things that weren't quite above board. And uh, one of her favorite stories is to tell us about the day her shop got raided. So uh, it's you hear these types of stories. It does happen. So it's one of those where we want to encourage everybody that you may feel invincible and feel like people can't um, – people can't get in trouble for it, but you certainly can. So Kayla's got a great question here. I have a crafter's license and my designs are denied from Transfer Express. What do I need to be able to have you print my transfers? At the end of the day, Kayla, we require the permission from whomever owns the rights to those logos. Uh, so again, whoever owns those logos, it's up to you to figure out who owns them, and then you would need to obtain permission from that that entity, uh, whether that entity requires a, a licensing agreement like we talked about earlier in the webinar, or whether that uh, entity will write you some kind of letter. For example, the example I used was uh, local local chapters of organizations like the YMCA. They'll the local YMCA will write you a letter to produce shirts for their particular YMCA, and that's fine. But someplace like the NFL, you're not going to get a letter of permission from the NFL. You're going to have to get a licensing agreement from the NFL. So continuing with our avoiding licensing uh, uh, slides here, one of the things that we've done here at Transfer Express is we've created all of these stock designs, all of these customizable designs that are based off of popular looks and popular sayings, our marketing team does a phenomenal job of keeping on top of what's hip and popular in the art world and in the, the uh, apparel industry and uh, sports as well. And we do our best to come up with designs that mimic those designs, making sure that none of it's copyrighted and not something you're necessarily going to get in trouble for. 
So definitely something that uh, to look into if you're trying to figure out how to print something, if you're trying to figure out how do I get around this, what do I do, how do I make my customer happy, start with artwork that you know is not copyrighted. Remember the whole point is, uh, I, I understand you'll say that, well, you know, it needs to look like such and such logo. Well, that's, that's the point, that particular logo is copyrighted and you can't make something that looks like it. You have to make something that does not necessarily look like it. So here's an example of that customization in action here. So uh, what you're looking at here, this is a screenshot of our EasyView online designer. This is a free online design tool that we offer. Uh, all you have to do is sign up with Transfer Express and you get 30 days of this for free. Uh, and we'll talk about that more in just a hot second here. But what we've done is we started off with that layout that you see on the left-hand side there, that QBA318. So that's a baseball design. We started off with that baseball design and we turned it into that Cleveland design that you see on the right. And again, this is not something that's copyrighted because all we've done is taken orange and brown and white. Yes, they may be colors that are tied to the local sports team, the local football team, but uh, all we've done here is the word Cleveland established 1946. This is not something that can be construed as copyright infringement because it's just referring to the city of Cleveland and it's got a football in the state of Ohio. So uh, again, using our easy view online designer is a great way to uh, to ensure that you're doing something that cannot be construed as as illegal. Again, uh, part of this is making sure you don't use words. For example, we can print the word Cleveland. We can print the word Browns, but we cannot print Cleveland Browns together. So that that goes with any other professional sports team. You can print Pittsburgh, you can print Steelers, but you can't print Pittsburgh Steelers together. All right. So uh, using our EasyView Online Designer, we also have our share tool where you can actually see your logo on a shirt. So that's what we've done here is we've gone to our share tool. We've picked a piece of apparel, a uh, nice V-neck uh, orange shirt, since orange, orange, brown are the colors here in Cleveland. And uh, we've been able to preview what that design will look like on that particular V-neck shirt. So another fantastic tool that we offer you, you can see what your design will look like on apparel. And then from there, you can either print it out, you can email it, you can download it. Uh, so definitely a great tool for you to use when you're trying to come up with these kinds of apparel options. And then continuing on with that theme, after you've come up with your design, we always encourage you to utilize the whole space. The dotted line that you'll see within Easy View is our artboard. That's basically the piece of paper that you're purchasing from us. So we encourage you to use up that piece of paper, fill it up. So we've gang sheeted this logo. We've filled it up with a whole bunch of other logos. So we are getting more bang for our buck this way. So definitely useful. Uh, so Jesse, that's a great question. Um, are state logos public domain? Um, now, again, I, I'm not exactly an expert here, Jesse, but uh, I believe the California state flag, for example, that sort of thing is public domain. Yes, you can reproduce that logo. Um, but again, this is where, like I said, Jesse, this is a good example because at the end of the day, it's your job uh, before you submit that artwork, it's your job to look into it to see if what you're doing is copyrighted or not. Uh, correct, Ron. That's what we're saying is you can print the word Seahawks. Sure, the word Seahawks itself is totally printable, but you cannot print Seattle Seahawks. Just like you can print the word Seattle, but you can't print Seattle Seahawks together. Robert, actually, this is a good question that is worth bringing up, and we could probably do a whole separate webinar on this topic by itself, Robert. What about local high school mascots? So this is sort of a problem here, too. Um, a lot of times what you'll see is high schools will oftentimes adopt a mascot that does belong to a college or a, high, or a um, professional team. Uh, now, again, at Transfer Express, we're not the copyright police, so we're not trying to 
you know, we're not trying to police, you know, making sure everybody's got permission. The, the goal is to make sure that you don't get in trouble and that we don't get in trouble. So that the problem here with high schools is that sometimes high schools do go and get permission for their copyrighted logos and sometimes they don't. Um, there's actually a story here locally. We had a high school in our area here in Northeast Ohio that uh, used a logo from a college and did not obtain permission. Uh, they had that logo for, I, I don't remember if it was the whole school year or just a couple months out of the school year, but uh, said high school got taken to court, things got messy and they had to change their logo. They ended up having to pay out some money and they had to spend a whole bunch of cash changing their, um, I mean, they had this logo painted in the school and on, on the uh, football stadium and all sorts of stuff. So um, at the end of the day, it's up to you to ensure if your high school gives you the Philadelphia Eagles Eagle logo, then you can rest assured that when you send that logo to us, we're going to tell you, hey, this is the Philadelphia Eagles logo. Do you have the proper licensing? Do you have the proper permission? So at that point, you're going to need to know if the high school has the proper permission, if they have the proper licensing. Thank you, Dorothy. Yes, uh, you get the cease and desist letters. Yep, that's exactly how that goes. So uh, again, the idea that we were talking about here is avoiding licensing and how to get around that. So from our friends at the Casey Swagger Shop, here are some fantastic examples of local designs that mean something to the local individuals that are not actually copyrighted. So an arrowhead is a great symbol uh, for them locally. Uh, Casey using uh, abbreviations like that, uh, Kansas City, that kind of thing. That's a, a great example, sort of like our CLE thing. Uh, touchdown, Kansas City. So again, the colors might pertain to the local sports team, uh, but we haven't named the sports team. We've just said touchdown, Kansas City. So again, this is a great way to get around the licensing. You're not doing anything legal at that point. You're not uh, infringing upon any copyright laws. Uh, you know what, uh, NW, we're going to answer that in just a hot second here. So continuing with this theme of avoiding licensing, uh, you see some more examples. Uh, and of course, our best examples are what we do here locally. So since we're here in Cleveland, this is what we know the best. So you see we've got a Cleveland baseball, Cleveland basketball, and Cleveland football design. We've utilized team colors and we've utilized the sport, but we haven't named the team. So that does not make this stuff, this doesn't make this illegal. This is perfectly printable. Uh, so we talked about it earlier. My example on the left here is a way to get around uh, scouts. So again, uh, Boy Scouts is something you have to have a licensing agreement with the Boy Scouts to print the words Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of America or their logos. Uh, so what we can do for you at Transfer Express is you can reference the word Scouts and you can reference a pack number. Uh, we just can't print Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts or Eagle Scouts or anything like that. Um, but the word Scouts is totally acceptable and pack numbers, obviously that's something you can print as well. So definitely a way that you can do that. And again, Boy Scouts, you have to get a licensing agreement with their, uh, their national office. You cannot get permission from the local level. That's just how that particular organization works, right? On the right-hand side, you see something that we see a whole lot of at Transfer Express. Families like to make shirts when they go to Disney World, which we all totally understand. Going to Disney is a, an event worth remembering, right? Um, unfortunately, uh, in our as the case may be, Disney logos are all very copyrighted. So if you send us Mickey Mouse ears with the Wilson family vacation, we can't print that. Um, but what we've done here is we've come up with a great substitute. So the words Wilson family are done up in a font that we have in our online designer called Waltograph. Obviously, you know, looks very similar. Um, but, uh, and then we've taken a generic castle, since obviously the Cinderella castle is copyrighted, the image of that is copyrighted, but we can take a generic castle and we can put that in some sunglasses and suddenly we've got the Wilson family Disney vacation. So again, it just comes down to being careful about what images are copyrighted and what you can do instead. And I understand that from a customer's perspective, your customer may come to you and say, well, we want the Mickey ears. Well that's unfortunately just not doable. At the end of the day, that's 
completely not legal and you just can't do that. So unfortunately, that's that's just one of those things that customers to some degree have to understand too, that they can't do something that's illegal either. So any of the examples that we've done here, we definitely suggest when you're doing these types of orders, where you're doing small runs uh, for somebody's family vacation, or you're doing small runs to do some kind of spirit gear for the local team, we definitely suggest you use heat printing. Uh, so it's easy to heat press apparel. It is quick and simple. It applies in seconds. And one of the great things is uh, you don't have to commit stock when you heat print. Uh, you purchase the shirts and you press them as needed so that if you don't end up selling all of them, you're just out transfers. You still have blank shirts that you can use since you haven't uh, made all the shirts ahead of time. Uh, you can take pre-orders that way, come up with your design and sell your design and then print the designs as they're ordered. And uh, very quick, um, it's very fast to do heat printing. Uh, our transfers here at Transfer Express ship in between one and three business days, depending on exactly what you order from us. And then you allow one to two days of shipping. So you can get things, uh, stuff that you order on Monday, you can have easily by the end of the week. So uh, definitely fast and painless. So uh, to get started with Transfer Express, all you do is go to transferexpress.com. You can sign up for an account with us. It's about halfway down the page under uh, Let's Get Started. So uh, you can sign up for an account there. And I know a couple of you have asked this question. So uh, easy view, uh, when you sign up for an account with Transfer Express, you get 30 days of easy view for free. After that, there is not a flat cost of easy view. Uh, in order to keep your easy view after 30 days, you simply have to place an order. And that order can be for anything. It can be uh, for transfers. It can be for marketing materials. It can be one small order of five pieces of something. It doesn't matter. As long as you have placed an order of some kind during that 30 days, then your uh, use of easy view goes for six months. So as long as you place one order every six months, you can retain your access to our free EasyView online designer. Now, uh, with your registration, if you have not registered and you do go and register at Transfer Express and sign up for an account, uh, you do get a sample pack mailed out to the address you provide us. And that sample pack will have uh, sample transfers and our catalog and we'll have all the different products that we have. Uh, so all sorts of goodies in that sample pack. So uh, definitely very useful if you have not ordered from us before. Uh, good question, Dawn Perkins. Uh, are the designs in the design center only able to be used uh, on transfers purchased from Transfer Express? Yes. Uh, the EasyView online designer is only usable for Transfer Express, only usable with our product. Dawn Jenke is asking, what is the shelf life? Uh, so transfers, if you've joined me before, you know, I, I can go on for 10 minutes on that question alone, Don. <laughs> transfers don't have a guaranteed shelf life. Uh, transfers can last a very long time if they are stored in a climate controlled environment that does not get too moist and does not get too hot. My favorite story, and if you've joined me before and you've heard this story, please forgive me for telling it again. I'm so sorry that you have to hear it again. But <laughs> for those of you who are new, my favorite story about transfer shelf life, we printed uh, transfers after 9-11 happened. Uh, we had this design of the Statue of Liberty rolling up her sleeve, and I, as a 18-year-old, uh, thought it was the coolest thing in the world. So I printed a whole bunch of those of the Statue of Liberty rolling her sleeve up when 9-11 happened. Uh, on the 10 year anniversary of 9-11, I pulled those transfers out. They were goof proof. I pulled those transfers out. They were very old at that point, 10 years old. And I pressed one and I did have to uh, go a little bit hotter for a little bit longer, but the transfer did work. Um, and that was one of those things that we had to pass around the office and to show everybody because uh, nobody believed me on that one. But so transfers can last a long time, uh, but just remember that it is easy to also ruin transfers. All it takes is one day in the hot trunk of your car or one day in a nasty moist basement and that can be enough to deteriorate the adhesive so that it will no longer adhere. So something to think about. Uh, Nata uh, Natasha, no, we do not offer digital downloads, no. <laughs> Rhonda, do I still have that design? No, sorry Rhonda, that was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> 
All right, guys. I know that there was a lot of questions, and a lot of you had a lot of things to ask. I apologize if we didn't get to every question. Keep in mind that, uh, like I said at the very beginning, I, myself, and my uh, help behind the curtain, Mike, we are not lawyers. <laughs> so we cannot give you legal advice. I can't tell you uh, what the law is state, and uh, I can't tell you what is okay and what is not okay. At the end of the day, the goal here was just to help educate you a little bit on how this looks from Transfer Express's perspective. So I certainly hope that this was helpful for everybody. Um, I apologize if we missed any questions. I encourage you, if you do have any questions about this sort of thing, definitely reach out to us. You can always get a hold of us at info at transferexpress.com. You can also call us at 1-800-622-2280. Our customer service reps are eager to answer your questions. Uh, just remember that after a webinar like this, our phones and emails do get slammed. So <laughs> please, please be patient. The reps want to help you, but there's a lot of people. Um, and uh, I also encourage you, if you have not before, please, 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 please take a minute and go to blog.transferexpress.com. Our marketing department works so hard on this blog and it is fantastic. We have won industry awards for our blog. Uh, it is incredible to watch them create every week just th this horde of blog posts and different concepts and things and, and creativity. I am always in awe. So please do take a minute to check out blog.transferexpress.com. Um, and uh, once trade shows are back up and going again, once once we're past this COVID thing and trade shows are happening again, we always encourage you to stop by and see us at the trade shows. So thank you everybody for joining us today. I hope this was useful. I, I hope uh, if nothing else, maybe we all came away with a little bit more understanding. And again, if, if nothing else, I hope what everybody gets is at Transfer Express, our goal is to help you grow your business. I want to make that order for you but I also want to make sure that you stay legally safe and we stay legally safe at Transfer Express as well, because it doesn't help either you or us if we get busted for violating copyright laws, right? <laughs> That's not a fun day for anybody except maybe the lawyer. So, all right, everybody, thank you for joining me today and have a fantastic rest of your day.